Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, 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 g'day, curd nerds, and welcome back to another episode of Ask the Cheese Man. And this is where you can ask all your home cheese making questions. I think we're up to episode 122. So absolutely fabulous to have you here today and to ask me all your cheesy questions. Now, before we get going, <coughs> um, the uh, I'd just like to thank all my financial members, YouTube members and patrons for supporting the show. Now, if you want to support the show as well, you can either hit the join button below or have a look in the description and there's a link to Patreon where there are different levels of support that you can uh, you can provide. Absolutely fantastic. Now we've got Kim on the um, moderate in the moderator seat and uh, she'll be making sure that no naughty boys and girls are in the chat and provides me with some links and stuff for uh, for sharing with you guys. Okay, um, so the video is this week, just a bit of housekeeping. So uh, this weekend I'll be putting up uh, Grana Padano, which is a very similar style to Parmesan. Um, so uh, be, look out for that one. Uh, we've got a Lancashire taste test, or Lancashire, however you want to say it. Um, we'll have a mead taste test very soon and, and the making video, how to make mead. So that'll be fun as well. Mead is honey wine, for anybody who wants to know. I've also had to break out my old camembert recipe, uh, traditional camembert. I'm working on a project with Made by Cow at the moment. And uh, I tried to make camembert using the raw milk uh, with a stabilised paste, and it just set too hard. So it didn't look like camembert very much at all. It looked more like a, um, what did Kim call it? Um... Uh, cheddar, cheddar bear, I think, something like that. Cheddar bird. Anyway, it was very cool. Um, so I'll have two videos, one, one fail and one success, I hope. Fingers crossed. Um, that'll be good. And I'm still working on 10 Ways with Way. I managed to add another little um, snippet, one of, the, one of the ways, I suppose, the other night when I made some gravy with, uh, with the way. Very nice. Um, so that's the videos coming up. And there's lots of people in the chat. We'll get to the get to um, saying the hellos in a minute. Um, but uh, Kim and I have got some news that we want to share. Now, you would have known, uh, regular viewers to the live stream would have known that um, she undergo uh, underwent, sorry, is probably the best word, some surgery the other day. Uh, it was, uh, we've had the results back from that surgery and Kim was diagnosed with a ductal carcinoma in situ, which is also known as pre-cancer in the breast. Uh, so uh, she wanted me to share this with you so you understand whether, um, you know, when, when we're not around and we have to cancel things and, and all that sort of stuff because, you know, we're absolutely dedicated to our cheese-making community. Uh, but, um, yeah, this, uh, this kind of hit us where it hurts and um, Kim has to go for a, another surgery um, at the end of a month and uh, get some more tissue um, cut out. And, um, and if that is not as successful as it should be, she'll be undergoing radiation therapy as well. Um, and that'll be happening over the Christmas period. Anyway, that's the news that we've got. A um, bit of a bombshell. But that's kind of how life goes, I suppose. And, uh, you look, we're in good spirits. Um, we've got over the shock factor, I suppose. And, um, yeah, look, we're just going to get on with our lives and, and get on with the community. So, anyway, so um, thanks for listening to um, that little piece there. I know it's hard for some people to, to, to get news like that, but, um, you know, I, we we need to sh we we sharing our lives as well on this cheese channel, and um, yeah, that's kind of what's happened. Anyway, uh, moving right along, let's have a look at um, 
let's have a look at some of the questions, shall we? We'll say hello now. <laughs> okay, first cab off the rank, Livestock. G'day, mate. How are you? Uh, Patricia, lovely to see you again all the way from sunny Halifax, Nova Scotia. Matthew, who I believe is a Brit in the Netherlands. G'day, Matthew. Lovely to see you again. Blub, blub. G'day to, <laughs> g'day to you as well. Uh, Bruce, lovely to see you as always, Bruce. Felicia, g'day. How are you? I see you've hit me up with a few questions there, but that's great. Ruth, as always, thank you very much for attending. Um, Tammy, lovely to see you. I think this is the second time for you, Tammy. I think you were on last time, which is great. Uh, George, g'day, mate. And Leonardo, how are you? Larry, Deep South Texas. Daydream, g'day, Daydream. Who else we got? Kim, of course. Thank you, Kim, for being my uh, uh, my beautiful wife. Um, where are we? Todd, g'day, Todd. Gary, g'day. Jacques, g'day, Jacques. Uh, Wildcat, Matt, g'day, Matt. Uh, where else we got? Uh, Wesley, I think that's how you say it. David, D. Houston. Um, where else? Ken. Oh, we got thousands. This is fantastic. Um, Fricky. Who else? Steve Benz. G'day, mate. Um, and, yeah. Um, yeah, and as Kim's saying down the bottom of the chat, um, uh, if you haven't been checked uh, recently, I know in Australia they have mandatory three-year tests for, um, uh, what do they call it? Oh, I can't remember the name of the test now. Um, oh, mammogram. Yeah, go, go and get it done um, because you'll get checked out early. Anyway, um, yeah, so let's get on with the question, shall we? If I can find the first one. Uh, let's have a look. Okay. Uh, Lifestyle, more of a statement than a question, says, With Halloween coming, if anyone is planning on making cheese, add sun-dried tomatoes, red and brown, will leach into the whey and cheese and make it look like blood in stain. Happened to my Philly. <laughs> Interesting. I know Halloween's coming up in, what, four weeks? You've got four weeks to make a cheese. Um, so it'll either have to be a fresh one or a kefili, I suppose. Some of the, the quickest cheeses to make. Uh, Matthew says, I was in Edom recently and saw cheese making equipment display from a few hundred years ago. I recognised every single piece of equipment in the display. It seems things have hardly changed. Yeah, definitely, especially for home cheese makers, Matthew. I would totally agree on that. You know, simple is best as far as I'm concerned. Um, somebody sent me a picture of a, uh, what was it? It was a, a pot stirrer or something, something like that, the other day. And I looked at it and I thought, yeah, look, you could get a pot stirrer that stirs your curds, you know, if obviously if you've got problems with your arms or something. But, you know, there's something quite relaxing, I reckon, about stirring the curd with your hand. Probably not so much grana padano because you'll sit there stirring for an hour. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I think there's something quite relaxing about making cheese, mate. Uh, making cheese. Um, Felicia says, good morning, Gavin. My question is, weak curd. What's wrong with weak curd? Uh, well, weak curd set is um, one of the banes of, of the uh, existence of the home cheese maker. And uh, it tends to... Um, well, when you don't get a good curd set, your cheese, your, your curds usually fracture and there's no structure to the cheese. So the, the protein uh, network uh, set by the K casein protein um, that usually meshes the curd together doesn't exist and therefore you don't get a curd and you don't get to press it. Um, usually it's either the milk that's been heated with too high a temperature um, or not adding enough rennet, um, or you've added the right amount of rennet and you just have to wait longer and be more patient. Um, that, that's some of the things that happen. Okay, Felicia's got another question. Uh, will mozzarella stretch better using skim milk? I mean, I want to make pizza using mozzarella that can stretch very long and advise. 
no. Uh, full cream milk's always better for making mozzarella. In fact, uh, traditional mozzarella was always used making buffalo milk, which has a very high fat content. Um, I think it's about nearly 10% uh, fat content, whereas cow's milk usually maxes out about five. Um, so the higher the fat content, the better usually um, for stretchy mozzarella. Uh, and the fresher the milk, the better. Raw milk is obviously best for making mozzarella. It gets heated, heated to quite a high temperature, so any bad bacteria that may be lurking would um, would definitely um, get killed off. So it's no big deal. Uh, and Felicia has one last question, I think, here. Can I use homemade yogurt as culture for my cheeses? Uh, if you go and have a look at my provolone video, um, the first, the good one, <laughs> there's two. One one didn't work and one did work. Um, I used a, uh, a tangy, a thermophilic or a Bulgarian culture, um, a yogurt culture as the culture for my cheese. It turned out quite well. Okay. Um, let's have a look. Um, uh, where are we? Uh, lots of thanks for Kim. That's fantastic. Thank you, guys and girls. Um, it means a lot to us. Um, uh, Patricia has a question. Uh, when I cut my three-month-old stout-infused cheddar, the slice shattered along the stout lines between the curd slab. Tastes great, but a little less than presentable. Any fixes? Very hard to fix after the fact, Patricia. Um, I don't know if you vacuum packed it. I know that helps sometimes. Bring the curd together if you've got you know curd that hasn't knitted to properly together when you've pressed it. More pressure obviously would help um, to get that curd to knit. And depends on. I found it a little bit difficult to get my curds together, but I'd really had to press it for a, a, not a long time, but um, a high pressure, and that seemed to work all right. Um, other than that, I can't really think of too much. Maybe the stout, maybe a little bit warmer when it's um, when the curds are soaking in the stout, uh, because cold curds don't tend to knit together properly like um, like. Uh, Warm ones do. Okay. Um, Ruth says, uh, saw the Made by Cow video in the New England Cheese Making Newsletter. Yay, Gavin. Oh, I must have missed that, Ruth. Um, I just had a look at the one that came out last night. Was it last night's one or last week? That'll be interesting. I'll have to go back and see if I can find it. But, um, yeah, I, miss, I must have missed it. Anyway, no big deal. Uh, I'll get around to that. Um, uh, Ruth says, Larry, did you hear me yelling thank you when I made American cheese after a, another nut failure? My, my husband thinks, knows I'm a nut. <laughs> nice one, Ruth. Um, uh, Patricia has another question. Uh, there are small spots of black mould on my Gruyere. They are not getting bigger, but brine and vinegar washing isn't making it go away either. Cheese won't be mature until January, suggestions. Uh, Patricia, I found that the Gruyere kind of attracts all sorts of mould, especially brown and black. More more brown, I suppose. Um, and the black ones will be fine. They're, they're not, they're not going to be deep-rooted in the cheese. It's not a big deal. Uh, just keep up with the washing because that's what you've got to do with the Gruyere anyway. Um, I don't think it'll go... Uh, it won't go off. Now, I found that I got brown spots and they started to spread as I kept washing. So it could be a form of um, Brevibacteria linens as well uh, without the stink. Uh, mine, mine didn't smell or anything like that. So um, just keep washing and I think it'll be fine. Todd says, um, I literally get more blue mould on cheese uh, that I don't add penicillium rope 42 than the ones that I do inoculate. Any thoughts on that? Oh, it's all about the conditions, I suppose, of growth. Now, remember that Penicillium Roque 40 does like a fairly dry sort of cheese. Uh, it, it can be touch dry and uh, you'll get blue mould on it. You'll tend to find that Penicillium Roque 40 on those drier cheeses is just a powder. You can wipe it off. It's no big deal. Um, in fact, with a lot of cheeses, um, and you don't see that very often in my videos, is that 
um, I just simply brush the mold off. Um, if it's not moist or anything like that, it's dry and it's just a powder, then just brush it off with a, um, I just use a, a very soft nail brush that I've got and that tends to work as well. Um, if you don't want to keep it moist all the time by using a simple brine solution to get it off. Um, other thoughts, Todd, are um, basically make sure that all your equipment's sanitised and all that sort of stuff before you start the cheese making process, including all your plastic ware and your plastic tubs and all that sort of stuff. Um, I find blue mould likes to, the spores, like to hang around a lot. So by boiling your stainless steel equipment and making sure that uh, you've, you've thoroughly washed and, uh, and sprayed your plastic equipment with um, with white vinegar, then that gets rid of most of the mould spores. And you don't have too many problems. Um, okay, Jacques says, Good morning, mate. Just wondering what part of Australia you're at, thinking of your average humidity temperature. Uh, we're in Melbourne, well, Melbourne area anyway, Greater Melbourne, uh, Jacques, and the temperature in summer can get up to 47 degrees Celsius and very dry, and in winter down to, these are daytime temperatures, down to about 10 degrees in winter, uh, 10 Celsius, and humidity about 50%. Look, it depends on whether it's raining on, I suppose. Um, but yeah, it, it's, we're known to have what's known as a Mediterranean climate um, here in Melbourne. Okay. Um, uh, Ruth says, Gavin, the picture and sound are really good. It can see the difference. Oh, okay. Thanks, Ruth. Appreciate it. Um, I'm not sure what I've changed, but it uh, seems to look good. Um, I think it looks fairly good anyway. It's um, I did up the stream, the bit rate of the stream, so that kind of might have helped as well. Uh, Wildcat Matt says, Hey Gav, followed your recipe for Budakase, aged it for a month, then tasted it. It had little to no flavour, any reason. Aged it for a month, but then I tasted it. Um, I think I can't remember that my recipe was about six weeks, I think. I think it was. Um, not sure um, what's going down, but uh, yeah, not sure what's going on. Oh, super chat. <laughs> I don't know where I am at the moment. Anyway, thank you, Ruth. Uh, appreciate your $10 super chat. I'll just read her note. It says, our family was hard hit by cancer the last, the past year, past year, two years. I'm the only one who doesn't have it. Um my sister has stage four ovarian. After 18 months of chemo, she is okay. Sending love and strength. Thank you so much, Ruth. I really appreciate it. And so does Kim. Um, so, fantastic. Thank you so much, mate. Um, okay. Um, where are we up to? Uh, can't really help too much there, Wildcat Matt. Um, don't know how what you added, how you added it. Uh, but yeah, the Budokase has such a, a lovely flavour normally, so not sure. Sorry, can't help much more. Um, Patricia says, question for a friend with a beehive is interested in doing a collaboration cheese. Any thoughts on the feasibility uh, consequences of including honey in a goat cheese recipe as an ingredient, not a rub? Um, honey tends to ferment, uh, Patricia. I'm not sure... Uh, that you can actually include it as an ingredient in the cheese. Um, you'll get um, uh, alcoholic flavours or you'll get, it'll taste a little bit like wine, um, I think. Um, because most of the honey rubbed Montasio is a classic. Um, there's a good recipe in Mary Carlin's book, um, Artisan Cheese Making. So you can check that out. Um, but yeah, as for adding honey into cheese, I'm not sure. I haven't seen any. I've seen some milled in after the fact to give the cheese a sweeter flavour, but uh, certainly not during maturation. So, um, But if you find anything else out, yeah, uh, feel free to share. That would be lovely. Um, where are we? Um, uh, Ken says, try doing the Budokaiser recipe and both time the curds came out very weak. Is the curd supposed to be as tight as the parmesan recipe or as a little loose? Um, Ken, let me think. Um, no, the uh, the curds are supposed to be quite moist. That's the thing with uh, Budokaiser. Um, they won't be like parmesan. Parmesan grains of curd are very, very small, like rice grain size. Um, 
Uh, and then it won't be just tight knit. Um, not sure why your curds came out weak. Um, very hard to diagnose. Um, without actually seeing what you did uh, and having photos. So, um, yeah, the, the, they're supposed to be fairly moist. Um, and when they knit together, they do hold together quite well. Um, Boudicca's does tend to flatten a little bit. Um, I've seen that um, with my recipe. But, yeah, I've, I've never had any problems with it. I made it a couple of times and it worked quite well. Um, Patricia says, Hey, Steve, I hate my curd heart. Bought it from someone other than you. If only you could ship to Canada. <laughs> Very cool. Now, for those who don't know, Steve actually does, uh, makes curd harps and sells them on Etsy. There's a link, I think, below in the description um, that you can get to his little Etsy store. Um, Fricky says, um, Gavin, if I add orange zest with a little lemon zest to get a citrus taste, will the oil from the zest impede the set of the cheese curds? Uh, good luck to you and to Kim. Um, get, when are you going to add it? If you add it to the milk, then yeah, you'll have an issue because it's acidic and it'll acidify the milk too much. If you add it when you mill the curds, then that would be the best time uh, and you'd be able to press it no problem. So when you mill the curds, when you add the salt, um, and it'll only work in cheddar-style cheeses, um, you won't be able to do it with any cheeses that you brine. Um, well, oh, actually, no. If you mill it into the curds before you put it in the mould and then press it and then brine it, yeah, that'll work as well. So it depends on the type of cheese you're going to have. Okay, um, I'm up to 35 minutes past. What time is it now? 52. I'm so far behind. Um, so many pay people saying thank you to Kim and that their prayers and their hearts go out to them. That's lovely. Thank you so much. Um, uh, where are we? Um, where is John? Smash the like button. Yeah, we've got uh, well, 68 people watching and only 22 likes. Come on, let's go, cheese curd nerds. Let's uh, get this video going. Um, George says, um, I recently lost two uncles to prostate cancer. Men still have issues with testing for it. you got to get it checked um, out if you are at the risk stage. Yeah, indeed, George, I um, agree 100%. I get checked every six months um, as part of my normal health routine. There's a blood test that you can do now. Um, that have markers for uh, prostate cancer. So for men, that's probably a higher risk uh, than certainly breast cancer. Um, but yeah, men do still get breast cancer as well. But yeah, I get checked every six months just to make sure. And my doctor is very good. In fact, my doctor was the one that sent Kim to the breast surgeon to get investigated. So uh, he's a really good guy. Uh, kudos to... Um, uh, Dr. Doug Spence, if he's listening, um, he's done a fantastic job and doing a great, great work out there. Um, and he's been at my family doctor, well, my doctor since 2000, I think. Great guy. Okay, um, moving right along. Uh, where is the next question? The next question's from Matthew. He says... Um, bought some curd harps. The wires can be set at 5 millimetres, 10, 15. I bought two. I was thinking 10 millimetres for cheddar style and 5 for alpine. Does that sound about right? Yes, Matthew, it does. Um, normally I cut it at about uh, 1, 15 millimetres. Actually, 15 millimetres is probably better for cheddar style because um, it's half an inch. Uh, so that works good for me. The 5 millimetres, perfect for alpine high... Um, High temperature alpine and um, and parmesan style. So, yeah, that'll be really good for you. Okay, um, where else are we up to? Um, Bob and Barb says, hi, Gavin, this is Bob. Hi, Bob. Um, I have a brie that I just wrapped and put in the fridge. How long into the fridge before it's ready to eat? Okay, well, it's uh, usually it's about, well, the smaller the cheese the less time it takes in the kitchen fridge. 
Normally I check it about two weeks, uh, but I have aged brie up to six weeks in the kitchen fridge because uh, it was a little thicker than what was normal. Normally it's about an inch high normal brie. Uh, that's the big, big wheels of brie. Um, so it can be up to six weeks. Um, so I basically push in the centre to see if it's starting to soften. That's the only way I usually, you can tell. The sides will get softer quick, uh, quicker because brie and camembert, those white bloomy mold cheeses, ripen from outside to in. Um, yeah, cool. Um, Daniel says, what's the easiest cheese to start making or what step during cheese making is most commonly done wrong? I tried making mozzarella the other day and it came out gummy. Um, okay. What is the easiest cheese to start making? Ah, uh, well, um, I don't know if Kim started to put some links in there somewhere, but, um, yeah, provolone, definitely, um, uh, try some halloumi, uh, don't forget ricotta, they're all easy soft cheeses. Kefili is a good one, don't start with quick mozzarella, it'll drive you insane if you haven't, um, made cheese before. Uh, because you really do need a little bit of experience before starting to make quick mozzarella. It's not a beginner's cheese, honestly. A lot of people think it is, but it, it just isn't. Um, I teach it in my club. Well, when I do a face-to-face -face class, which I haven't done for a while, um, due to circumstances beyond our control, our business has just gone crazy. Um, that's the third cheese I teach people to make. Um, so they've got a bit of understanding on how things coagulate, what signs to look for, um, how to heat the cheese, and and really, yeah, quick mozzarella is not the first cheese you should be jumping in. Uh, Darren from Houston says, "Is raw cheese is raw cheese better than pasteurised cheese?" Uh, well, it's all very subjective. You can get some fantastic pasteurised cheeses, but raw cheese does have a certain um, uh, je ne sais quoi, may I say? Uh, it has a uh, it has a different taste process. So if you make a cheese with raw milk and then pasteurize the milk and then make the cheese with the same milk as pasteurized, you'll have better flavors in the raw milk one than you do the pasteurized one. However, you can change the pasteurized one by adding in different types of starter cultures um, to get that same flavor. Very hard to match though, but uh, yeah, it's cool. Um, Joseph said, would you consider your cheddar to be a white cheddar? Uh, no because uh, I add anato, it's the normal cheese cheddar should be. When you take when you don't add anato, that's when um, uh, that's when it becomes a white cheddar. However, if the milk's got a lot of beta carotene in it, um, then uh, it will yellow on its own. If you use goat's milk and make a cheddar style cheese, then you're going to have a white cheddar. Easy peasy. Karen says, um, I missed what happened, but prayers. For the best of health and happiness for Gavin, Kim and family. Thank you, Karen. Appreciate it. Um, I'm not going to repeat what I talked about. Um, just at the end of the show, just rewind and go back. It's at about a minute to 8.35 it was on the timestamp. Um, Jordan says, can I take your bloomy goat cheese and make a bloomy cow blue? Yes, indeed. It'll work. Um Go for it and send me a photo, Jordan. Uh, George, Gav, any experience uses powdered milk and cheese, not counting uh, paneer or ricotta? No, I haven't. Uh, only yogurt. I've only put powdered milk in yogurt and just to thicken it up a little bit uh, before I added the starter cultures and I made a nice Greek yogurt, which is a, a thicker style of yogurt. Um, that's the only experience I've had using powdered milk in cheese making, uh, George. Uh, Tracy says, can I use a natto to colour my kefir cheese? Uh, tips for seasoning it. Yes, you can use a natto in any cheese. It's a harmless ingredient. It just adds colour, no flavour. Uh, just add it to the milk, to whatever percentage you want. The more natto you add, the more orange the cheese will go. Uh, if you only add a few drops, then you get a slightly yellow, yellow colour. Um, uh, tips for seasoning the kefir cheese. Um, not sure. Um, yeah, herbs, any herbs and spices that are your favourite, use those. They'll be fabulous. 
Um, Jordan says, I noticed that most recipes just call for a direct set mesophilic culture, any specific one. Um, yeah, it should have two strains, um, Jordan. I think I did this last week, but I'll do it again. Um, let me just uh, bear with me for one second. I'll just uh, go to the, the desktop. Uh, um, if I can get this thing to go full screen. Right, so you're looking for, I'll just use MO30 as an example. It's a, a normal strained mesophilic. So what you're looking for, and uh, down here, this is what we're looking for. I don't know if you can see that. Shall I make it, can I make it bigger? Let's make it bigger. There we go. All right, so what you need is a culture with Lactococcus lactic subspecies Cremorus and Lactococcus lactus subspecies lactus. That is the standard mesophile um, used for most um, hard cheeses. So if it just says mesophilic culture, that's kind of what you're looking for. Um, so those two subspecies of, of lactic bacteria. I um, hope that helps out. Okay, next question is from Nick. Nick says, how can I up the fat content of the 3% milk uh, I can only get in Cyprus? Uh, well, it depends on the fat content that you want, uh, Nick. You can add cream to the milk. As long as it's not ultra-pasteurized, it'll work perfectly. Um, how much cream is up to you? Um, normally in 10 litres of milk, if I want to get the fat content a little bit higher for making something like Stilton or Camembert or something like that, I'll add uh, a cup of milk, uh, sorry, a cup of cream, so 250 millilitres, um, and that tends to, um, to fatten up the milk a little bit and uh, makes it just as creamy as it normally would straight out of a cow. Um Ruth says, last week, I can send it to you. Yes, Ruth, if you could. I think that's about the newsletter. So, yeah, very cool. Uh, Martin says, what is your favourite cheese you've ever made? Oh, that I've ever made. Oh, goodness. The one that shocked me the most, I don't know how many times I've said this, was um, uh, was Tilsit, which is my first washed rind cheese. First cheese ever made with brevi bacteria and linens. And the flavour was outstanding. I just couldn't believe it. Blew my mind. Um, that's the one that really sticks in my memory. Another one that um, really got me excited was my own recipe was the Petite Blue. Um, that was very nice. And let me think the other one, the Bloomy Goat Blue that I made, they were really lovely. So surprises. I kind of started making them. I just made up the recipe myself and went for it. You know, you've got to experiment sometimes. And, uh, yeah, they worked out really well. So they're my favourite ones to make, I think. Um, but you can't beat a good old cheddar. The cheddaring process is good good fun. John is on board. Lovely to see you. I'm 15 minutes late to the party, John. That's me. He says, watching Bear Grylls Survival School now switch to Gavin Webber's Survival Cheese School. Very nice indeed. Steve says, I'm using my sous vide machine for making cheese now. Perfect temperature control for a change. Um, I set it up in my sink with a 24 quart, what's that, 24 litre cheese pot. Works great. Fantastic, Steve. Yeah, I'm going to invest in a sous vide very soon and uh, try and up my game as far as temperature control. Even though I think I've got it down pat with the um, little pot on a pot thing that I use, I don't have too many troubles. I know when to take it off the steam and put it back on again, but that's because I've been doing it the same way for years and years. But I think a sous vide would um, take a lot of the angst, I suppose, out of it, especially when I'm heating cheeses up to a high temperature, um, like some of those um, hard Italian cheeses would probably really help as well, and to keep the temperature stable. So, um, Sadi, I don't quite know how to say that, but I'm sorry if I've butchered your name. Um, hi, Gavin. I'm making camembert, the little bears. Do you dry the cheese after brining? Mine seem a little too wet. Yeah, just pat them down with paper towel. That's what I do. Um, but they will weep a lot of moisture. And the ones I'm making at the moment, traditional camembert, based on that um, that little bear recipe, um, are still quite moist. They're weeping way as they do over the first week. Um, and then they'll start making the uh, the bloom, the bloom will come, the white bloom all over the cheese. 
So the first week, yeah, don't forget to turn them daily. They will um, be quite moist. So, but the, when I straight out of the brine, I pat them down with a paper towel like that. All right, <laughs> cool. John says thumbs up. Forty-two likes. That's fantastic. I didn't even look. It's just gone crazy. Thank you very much, John and Ruth. I think it was who um, said give us a thumbs up. That would be lovely. Um, Kevin says, "How's the Rugby World Cup going? Go Springboks." I oh, don't watch it, Kevin. Sorry, I'm not a sports fan. I'm a cheese fan. Karen says, um, after several months off from cheese making due to another surgery, I made bel paese and gouda last week. I believe my curds cooled a bit on the bel paese for a poor knit on one side. Oh, it's no good, Karen. I hope it all turns out all right. Um, I think you've got another question, another thing. I pressed the gouda in warm way for the first 30, then 60 minutes. The knit on that one looks perfect. Yeah, it's quite amazing. Um, those um, uh, Dutch style cheeses, um, that dipping in the warm way kind of really tightens the curd up, makes it look really good. Um, Abdullah Walla, Waha, I'm fuck, sorry, I'm not very good at names today. Hi, Gavin. Hi, how are you? Patricia, question number four. Oh, who's counting? Patricia, doesn't matter. Uh, when the label says, the label says milk is 3.25% fat, does that mean percentage by weight or by volume it's by volume patricia usually it's uh 3.5 if you have a look maybe on the back of the label now i know in australia it says fat content per 100 milliliters milliliters or grams oh now you got me i'll have to have a look um yeah n normally it's 100 mils yeah yeah i think it's by volume for milk um, but yeah, it'll be 3.5% per volume. Uh, George says, Gavin, which cheeses are the most profitable in your opinion, as in cheap to make, sells for a good price and are popular and have high demand? Oh my goodness. Um, don't know. I don't sell my cheese, so I don't know. Um, uh, I really don't know. Um, that's a good one. Maybe it's uh, a question you can ask your local um, cheesemonger. Go into a cheesemonger, ask which one sells the most, and that probably, and you'll have to figure out how much it costs to make it, of course, and that's a good gauge. Uh, maybe go to two cheesemongers just to get a kind of even um, representation of the, the cheese market where you are. And, um, yeah, because you've got to remember different countries Different people like different types of cheeses, so it's very hard to uh, to determine that. Um, me personally, cheddar's the number one selling cheese in the world. Mozzarella's number two, um, and that's only because of pizzas. Um, but uh, yeah, cheddar's definitely the largest sold cheese in the world in its many, many forms, whether it was cheddared properly or not. But uh, yeah, that's... That's, I don't know what number three is. Who knows? Camembert, maybe. Who knows? Um, Abdul says, um, how do I get some of the materials I used to make cheese in my country? I could not get. Um, Abdul, you can go over to littlegreenworkshops.com. We ship everywhere, most countries anyway. Um, I'll just bring up the link for you, mate, so you can uh, find the cheese shop without too many issues. Um Get that back to 100%. Here is the link coming right up. Um, if I can find my keyboard, there we are. There we go. There's the link. Um, but we ship all over the world except for countries that are banned. Um, Karen Cordius, oh, you've I've already read that. <laughs> Kim's banning naughty people all over the place. I don't know what naughty people have been doing, but anyway. Pardon me. Jordan says, um, will your 165 cheese mould hold a four-gallon batch? Four gallons is 16 litres. Uh, no, just shy of that. So uh, with using full cream milk, I can usually put a 12-litre cheese in there. Uh, but anything else, so that's three gallons. 
Uh, it won't do four. It's not big enough. Um, so, no, it won't. Um, Jacques says, um, thanks. We're moving to Tassie next year. Hope the weather is good for cheese making as we're hoping to have lots of our own milk. Goats, sheep, cows at least, uh, not the missus. <laughs> um, yeah, Jacques, I think the weather down in Tassie is perfect for cheese making. Um, there are lots of artisan cheese makers in Tasmania. Um, you'll be surprised. Kevin says, I see my order has shipped. Cannot wait to make my camembert and brie. Thanks, Kevin. Yes, thank you for your order. Um, we shipped it off to Canada where Kevin lives. Um, and uh, it'll get there safely. I think it has before quite a few times. Okay. Um, Blade Returns says, hi, it's late here in Scotland, but just popped up to say, I like your vids. Keep up the good work. Good night. Thank you, Blade. Um, appreciate it. Um... Tracy G says, can I use my kefir whey to make ricotta? Uh, yes, if it's cloudy whey, then you'll be able to make it. Um, kefir grains tend not to over-acidify too much. So there should be some whey protein there. You won't have too many problems. Um, Matthew said, let me have a look. Where, where, where are we? Oh, I've lost my entire place. Here we are. Um, I'm up to the questions at 8.50, so what am I, 20 minutes behind? Doesn't matter, we'll get there. Uh, Matthew says, I've got a book called Artisan Cheese Making at Home by Mary Carlin. She doesn't state the IMCU rate. Rennet, she uses in her recipes. Are you aware of the book and the MCU Rennet she's using? She uses, I think in the, in the start of the book, she says single strength, which can be anywhere between 200 and 280 um, IMCU, Matthew. So I've used her recipes using my Rennet, um, the Chimax Plus that I use, and works perfectly. John says, um, okay, people, latest news, don't eat GMO foods, corn, oats, oatmeal, soybeans, high in estrogen, reason for male low testosterone plus other diseases, indeed. Yeah. Um, Kim says, hi, George, I removed your comment as I deleted the other comment. Thank you. George says, Kim, no problems. Um, okay, right. I don't know what's going on there. It doesn't matter. Uh, John says, same for GMO, BT corn um, et al. foods. BT fungus is source for honeybee collapse and bat white nose fungus. Even cows eating these foods pass it on. Yeah, indeed. We, we avoid all GMO food uh, that we can that we can tell. Um most food products say non-GMO on them now anyway. So, um, Matt says, yep, I bought a, a curd heart from Steve. Works great. Yep, indeed it does. Mine are going strong, and thank you, Steve, for those. Leonardo says, I'm having trouble finding some recipes for that black lemon cheese. Do you have any idea where I can get one? Uh, no. I tried looking myself, Leonardo. If anybody's got a recipe for black lemon cheese... Um, shoot it my way and I can share it on the next stream. Okay. Um, uh, John says, good milk, good cheese, no excuses, indeed. Uh, Fricky says, thanks, Mr. Webby, you're the boss. Try to be. Um, Juan says, I've tasted some age breeze. One of them over-ripened. It had a strong ammonia smell, but it tastes as good and as complex as the others. It was wrapped in foil. Was it spoiled? Uh, if it tasted okay, I don't think it was spoiled. Um, yeah, they, they often have a strong ammonia smell because um, the penicillium candidum uh, makes ammonia as it starts to liquidise the cheese on the inside. Um, should have been okay. If you're not sick, you're fine. Um, Ruth says, please talk about any tips about cutting a wheel and re-waxing the segments. Just wanted to make sure I'm doing that safely. Um, yeah, Ruth. Um, so normally, well, of late because I'm a bit lazy, I've been I've just cut the wheel into quarter. Well, you see in the videos what I do. So I cut it in half, cut them in quarters, and then off camera I'll cut it into eighths, and then I'll revac pack it. If you just cut it into eighths and then just re dip it in wax, that's fine. That'll keep just as well. Just keeps the moisture in. Uh, keeps the moulds off the cheese and it'll just store in the kitchen fridge for as long as you want. Um, you won't have too many troubles. You're doing it fine. Um, 
as long as straight after you've cut it, you wax it, but don't let any airborne molds or yeast get on the cheese. Okay, um, hope that helps, Ruth. Uh, Chris K says, I tried making halloumi the first time with unhomogenized milk, success. The second time with regular whole milk, the milk were not curd. Could the rennet have gone bad? Um, it was out for a bit when I got it. No, it'll be the milk, definitely. Um, the unhomogenized milk works fantastic, as does raw milk. For um, for halloumi, I've tried making it with pasteurized homogenized milk. It doesn't work as well. And you can't even fold it over. The stretch is not... When you take it out of the hot way and it's floated to the top and you try and fold mint into the half, it just can't get it to work. It, it Pasteurized homogenized milk just doesn't have the right structure. Okay, um... Daniel says, thanks for your answer, Gavin. Prayers for Kim, hoping for the best result. Indeed, um, we all hope for the best result for my lovely wife. Okay, Kim, thank you for the links there. Um, Tracy says, even though I haven't made any real cheese yet, I'm inspired by your videos. Thank you. Right now, I'm just putting a putzing with uh, kefir cheese. Could really use some tips. I can't honestly say I've made kefir cheese, uh, Tracy. Um, break out of the kefir cheeses. Grab yourself some rennet. Grab yourself some starter cultures and go for it. If you make kefir cheese successfully, then you can make any cheese. So really um, take that first step on the long journey of cheese making. You'll have fun doing it. Um, JG says, hello, my name is Amelia. Amelia, yep, Amelia from Texas. I'm new to cheese making. Any tips for making mozzarella? Yep, don't make it as your first cheese. There's my tip. And if you do, make the real mozzarella, which Kim's put the link in at timestamp 901. Uh, that's the best one to try. Uh, Scott W says, I missed the start due to breakfast with halloumi I made yesterday. First time I've made it and it worked well. Well done. Um, John says, John says, 156,000 subs. Woohoo, thumbs up. Indeed. Um, now, you'll notice that the little ticker in the background is, which is over there, isn't displaying the full number anymore. And that's thanks to YouTube's wisdom of changing, short, shortening the numbers. So if I change it back to the old way, um, the numbers come up. All you see is 156,000. There's no, there's no numbers below that. So uh, they've abbreviated. It. So I've had to abbreviate it on my counter, but mind you, the the people are subbing quite often. So probably once a week, I'm getting a thousand subs, which is absolutely fantastic. I'm really happy with the way the channel is um, is growing as well. And thanks to all you people for promoting it far and wide, which I know you do on social media because I kind of pick up on it sometimes. But if you haven't um, shared a video lately, please do so. That'll be really good. And uh, more people would uh, be in the know about the cheese channel. Uh, Rocketeer54 says, I haven't seen any recipes for cheddar pepper jack. I was wondering if it's possible to make. Secondly, if it is possible, would you be able to make it for a vid? Um, I don't know if Kim's put the link up, but there is um, uh, There's a jalapeno cheddar. Uh, oh, she has put the link up. That's fantastic. So jalapeno cheddar, that works really well. Um, I've made um, pepper jack. There's a triple pepper jack made with Monterey jack. Um, but you can do the same thing. So with a cheddar, um, after you've, um, just before you press it and the cubes just stir through your chilies and all that sort of stuff and you'll get a pepper jack. But yeah, go and check out the jalapeno cheddar video that Kim's put up for you. Tracy says, I can go to my local Amish farms and get milk literally minutes away from the Tet. Okay. Uh, what cheese would you make with that option? One of the farms that has those cows produce high milk fat. I mean, chewy. I would make any cheese. Any cheese would go fantastically with the milk you get from the Amish farms. Um, uh, don't be restricted by what I say. Well, I haven't said anything, but... Yeah, uh, any cheese would be absolutely fantastic. So give that a go, Tracy. Muhammad says, um, I hope you found the Moroccan cheese um, jebin. No, I didn't find the recipe for it. Um, I couldn't find it. Sorry, mate. 
Um, if you've got one and, you know, then you send it to me via email. Just go to the About page on the channel and you'll be able to see my email address and shoot me an email. Wam says, what are the differences between brie and camembert? Good question, Wam. Um, camemberts tend to be small, about that size usually, um, and are about one and a half inches tall um, and are made in Normandy in France. Bries are made in Brie, um, which is about 15 kilometres or 15 miles from Paris, which is a totally different part of the country, and they're made in wheels about that big, uh, and they're about one inch high. Um, different ripening profiles. Don't be confused by the stuff they sell in the supermarket that they pretend is Brie or Petite Brie. The process is almost exactly the same. Um, but with traditional brie, the size is what counts and changes the flavour of the of the cheese. Okay, um, John says, probably string cheese or string sticks or braided, and the cheddar appears to be most profitable with Jack, Monterey, and lastly Swiss on the West Coast. Mexico would be all the queso fresca types. Yeah, exactly, John. It depends on your location. If you're in Europe, then the European cheeses are going to be more popular. Um, uh, so, yeah, so. Um, Roach Dog Jr. says, do you like Wallace and Gromit? Uh, yes, they are amazing, as Kim has said. They are fantastic. I love Wallace and Gromit. Um, Nick Ardman does a great job with the animations, and so does his company now. Um uh, N.W. Steve says, I have never seen anything. I just want to make plain cheese curd snacks. Do they have to age or are they ready to eat immediately? Maybe you could do a video on that. Funny you should say that. I've already done a video about it. If you go and have a look for squeaky cheese curds, and I don't know if Kimmy's put the link up. No, she hasn't. If you put the link up, honey, for um, squeaky cheese curds, uh, then uh, that'll heap out, help help out um, Steve and you'll be able to make those just for snacking on. Don't need to age them. They're lovely. Uh, Der Sunder says, Hello, Gavin. I don't really have a question, but wanted to say that I love your videos, even though I'm a vegan and don't eat milk cheese. I wanted to thank you for the vegan cream cheese video. No problems at all. Happy to help out. Toby says, Hey, Gavin, great videos. Thanks, Toby. Um, Jan says... You are the king. Thanks for sharing um, with. Oh, hang on. Thank you for sharing with you passion with us. Thanks, Jan. Um, Roller skate says jalapeno and cheese, good or bad? Absolutely fantastic together. Um, Manuel, lovely to see you, mate. Um, hi, Gavin. When you make crescenza, do you put yogurt make from thermophilic culture? How do you make this yogurt? Yeah, so using yogurt cultures, they're a li little bit different strain than thermophilic starter cultures. Um, I just got yogurt out of the fridge. Um, so um, we had some Greek yogurt. That's what I used for the Crescenza, and that seemed to work all right. Nice, um, tangy sort of yogurt. Um, but yeah, I, if you have a look in our store, there are thermophilic cultures specifically for yogurt. They've got another one. I think it's Thermophilus uh, bulgaris, I think, or lactus. Lactococcus bulgaris, which is the yogurt culture strain. Tracy says, you realise by telling us not to make mozzarella the first cheese that that is exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, black lemon cheese, Google it. Black gouda style with licorice flavours and lemon. Actually dried black lime. Look up the recipe. Many new producers. Very good. Thank you, John. Um, uh Toby says, does homogenised milk lead to easier cheese making? Does the distributed fat lead to more consistent cheese? Uh, no, far from it, Toby. It actually um, hampers the cheese making process, uh, stops a good curd set. The fat globules throughout the milk don't necessarily uh, make a more consistent cheese per se. It just makes it harder to set the curds um, so, yeah, um, as long as, uh, as well as um, higher temperature pasteurisation, it's a little bit ordinary. Um, Jim, thanks, mate, for the super chat. Um, don't know, the light going off? Oh, well, there we go. Super chat, love your work. And um, where's your gold star? 
Got to be coming soon. Come on, computer, do your stuff. Anyway, I'll read out what Jim says. Um, boy, show up late and no chat available. Had to reboot to get the chat box, but happy I did. G'day, Gavin and Kim. Hope you are mending well. Uh, some news on that, Jim. You may need to go to the start of the stream to have a look. But there's your gold star. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Um, anyway, um, what are I get up to? Uh, Logan says, new to chat. Um, do you have a video of your cheese storage area? Uh, yes, indeed. If Kimmy can get that up, we've got five minutes to go. Um, it should be the one about the cheese fridge, I think, or looking at the what's in the cheese fridge or one of those videos, honey. And uh, Logan will have a look what's going on. John says, we recently had a farmer's cheese in dry curds, dry cottage cheese, local high price market. Very interesting. Um, Logan says, I'm building a new area and would love to start making my own cheese after watching your videos with my kids. Thanks, Logan. Yeah, Kim should be able to find that video for you. Uh, if not, go to the channel and just type the word fridge and you shouldn't have too many problems finding the fridge videos where I store my cheese for maturation. Um, Robin Bill says, um, Hey, Gavin, I made your Bloomy Goat Blue with cow's milk and it was fantastic. I used blue cheese from the store to add the culture. Absolutely fantastic. And there's no better way to do it, really, if you don't have a Penicillium Rogue 40. Um, culture available, then, yep, definitely cut some out of a cheese that exists and it'll reculture all by itself. It's uh, virulent little stuff. It just goes crazy, given the right temperatures and conditions. Um, Azanth says hello. Hello, Azanth. Uh, Jan says, I recently had a cheese that was similar to camembert, but had a reddish colour and flavour that suggested bee linens. Would adding a little bee linens to a standard camembert even work? Crazy idea. Uh, it probably would. Um, especially if you add geo to it as well. Um, geo trichum candidum. Uh, because that neutralizes the surface, makes it absolutely perfect for um, bee linens to grow. So you... Uh, the thing is, you won't get the bloomy white over the top. And I've had this happen before on bee linens cheeses, that... The geo started to take over, and um, but underneath is the red mold on the surface of the um, of the cheese. So uh, what I had to do was wipe off the white mold and to get the washed rind. Um, but yeah, you won't it won't happen together because bee linens likes moister cheese, whereas um, the other one doesn't. Uh, penicillin candidum. Tracy says, don't remember the website, but they said scraping the coating on brie. Could inoculate my kefir. No, I haven't tried it, Tracy. Um, remembering that kefir grains also have geotrichum candidum, which is a white mold as well, um, which is already in it. Um, so they're in the kefir grains already if you let them age long enough. Um, Kim's given me the wind up, so um, don't forget to uh, visit the store. I'm not sure what link she's put there. That looks like. Um, uh, a YouTube video that says visit our store, but it's actually, um, let me just <laughs> go to the store. Let's have a look. Go to the desktop. There it is. Uh, Little Green Workshops. That's where we live. That's what we do. Uh, and we sell cheese products um, to and to everybody. So accessories, kits, cultures and molds, rennet, equipment, baskets, ingredients. There's some books. We recently got some more books in. And uh, merch, of course. There's some lovely merch over there, including the T-shirt that I'm wearing right now, uh, which says, if I stand up, uh, make cheese, not war. <laughs> Somebody said to me the other day, it looked really cool. Anyway, there we go. Uh, if you want to support the show, don't forget to hit the join button below or go to the link in the description for Patreon uh, and you can support the show financially. We, Kim and I really... Appreciate all our financial support members. Um, and merch, of course. Um, you can go, I think there's a merch shelf below the video. So go over there and um, buy away. Get your T-shirts and mugs and all that sort of good gear. That are... It's all cheesy. Recently added a Get A Curd Nerds shirt. So should have put that up first. But yeah, anyway. Um, uh, Ruth says that... Uh, um, 
have a good time. Oh, thank you. Thank you for a wonderful chat. Um, all good. Oops, sorry, Gavin. What's that? Ruth, we had an email yesterday saying something coming in the mail from a special lady. And then she said, oops, sorry, Gavin. Oh, it's okay, honey. Uh, okay. Oh, right, for the link. No, all good. All right, so we're all finished. Um, thank you so much for watching. We, I'm pretty sure we'll have a show on Saturday, if you confirm that, Kim. I think we're around. Um, but I'll schedule it uh, via the scheduling tool, and you'll see it if it, if it comes up. If not, then um, something's not quite right and uh, we've had to skip it. But uh, hopefully we're still doing Wednesday and Saturdays for a while until Kim has to have the, uh, the second surgery and radiotherapy that goes with it afterwards. So we may be a little bit scarce. Uh, we're still going to try and do a show once a week. It depends on how much fatigued Kim um, will get um, during the radiotherapy. But... We'll play it by ear and uh, we'll go from there. If not, I'll have to get Ben and recruit him into the moderation seat uh, and get him in there. Anyway, thank you all for watching, Curd Nerds. Appreciate you. And uh, don't forget to watch out for the Grana Padano video this week. And if you like it, uh, share it on all the socials. That would be absolutely fantastic. And Kim's just confirmed, yes, we are here on Saturday. So same channel, same bat channel, same cheese channel, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and same time. Now, remember, we go to Daylight Savings. Oh, actually, it doesn't affect Saturday. We go to Daylight Savings on Sunday. So next Wednesdays, there'll be the time will be different for everybody. So we'll go from there. Um, Kim says, no show Saturday week, though. Yeah, indeed. Anyway, um, I'll schedule them up, and you'll see all the live streams as we go along. Anyway, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and we'll see you next time.